You know, Australia in the 1970s is a country which really embraced your music, both the self-titled album and No Bad Habits. The following year had massive commercial success. I guess in a time when chart success meant something, that time period in your career is uh, just amazing. It's it's all over now. Baby Blue went to number three here, which resulted in a top 10 album. And it's a similar story for the Warm Ride single, which climbed all the way to number two on the Australian charts with No Bad Habits reaching number six. You did a promo tour in November of 77 and there was talk of a concert tour in 1978, which I believe never eventuated. I'm surprised with all that chart success. A tour was never booked. Yeah, I don't know why that happened. I have no idea. I mean, you're, you're telling me something that I don't even know about uh, because uh, I at that time I didn't have a band anyway. I was just, you know, recording and that was about it. I never went on the road with any of the, the albums. I didn't give any promotion or anything so i didn't have a band and i was just graham bonnet on his own you know so that's probably why it didn't happen i'm not sure i mean you're telling me something i didn't really know was probably going to happen I, that's news to me you know i have so, met, sorry i have met people over here over the years yeah. who are convinced it's all over now baby blue is in fact a graham bonnet tune that to me is a great indication that an artist has made a song very much their own Oh, yeah, well, thank you to those people. Yeah, because it's Bob Dylan's song, of course, but I edited it a bit. There was one verse I didn't think was, it didn't sound right the way I did the song. And um, the idea I had for that song itself, when I went to my producer, I said, I'd like this to be like um, uh, uh, the Rod Stewart song. Um, yeah, um, Maggie yeah, Maggie, Maggie May, I think. Yeah, yeah Maggie yeah. May. Wait, yeah, wake up, Maggie, da, 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 da. because it, the melody is very similar. Mm. The chords are pretty much the same, too. And uh, I wanted to have that sound that he had on Maggie May. I can't think of the title. Like, I'm sorry. But um, that's how we put the arrangement together. And my producer said, what a great idea. And uh, so it was a hit single, which is, again, I was surprised by. But um it didn't happen in England, but it did happen in Australia for me. At that time, I was living in England. And I remember a DJ over there, a guy called Tony Blackburn. He played the single, It's All Over Now, Baby Blue. And he had a, a, a sarcastic comment at the end. He said, it, it's all over now by Graham Bullitt. And it certainly is. You know, he was, he put me down, basically, on <laughs> Well, one. not really. It uh, it still gets played regularly on uh, on AM radio and radio here. But Graham, those yeah. recordings from uh, seventy seven seventy eight were released via Ringo Starr's short lived yeah. label Ringo Records. But that was not yeah. your first connection to Ringo, as I believe that when you were fourteen years old, you unsuccessfully auditioned for a band playing at an English holiday camp, which featured one Richard Starkey behind the kit. Is that correct? Uh, almost. I I didn't get to. What, what happened was my neighbor knew Ringo, my next door neighbor, and he came to me one day. He said, there's this man who's playing at Butlin's Holiday Camp. Mm. He's got a beard. He looks a bit like a, you know, a beatnik, as we used to say back then. And his name's uh, Richard Starkey, but he calls himself Ringo Starr. And he's a drummer, and they're looking for a new singer. Uh, they had, it was called Rory Storm. Rory Storm was the singer. And so... He went along to Ringo and said, I've got this kid who lives next door to me who's a really good singer, and he would like to come and audition for the band. And he said, okay, da, da, da. how old is he? And he said, well, he's 13. Oh, way too young. Because at that time, you couldn't play in a place that sold liquor mm. unless you were, I think it was 15 or 16 in England at that time. You could play on stage, but you weren't allowed to drink, obviously. And you couldn't go anywhere near the bar when you were 15 or 16 years old. But I was only 13. And so um, that's what happened. I, I never auditioned for them. But uh, of course, years later, I met Ringo when uh, we had the little party for me when the first album on Ringo Records was uh, released. So I, I sort of uh, said, you know something. I told him a story. Anyway, it was kind of cool. <laughs> but it never happened. I could have been in the Beatles. You never know. You could have gone to Hamburg with uh, Rory Storm and the Hurricanes. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. 